Hi everybody, I'm Scott Hards, back for part three of my Yacht Tiger build on Boss Builds. Uh, thanks for joining us again, and thanks again for all the nice comments on the first two episodes uh, that we've put up so far. You know, as uh, planet Earth struggles with the coronavirus here, it's great to see that some people have chosen to spend uh, some of their uh, social distancing time, shall we say, or quarantine time uh, with us here at Boss Builds. That's very encouraging, and it, it gives me, too, kind of a sense of uh, community with everybody out there as we all try to stay safe, stay healthy, and get th through this thing as best we can. But hey, building plastic models is a great way uh, to spend time at home, always has been. And let's take a look at how far we've gotten on this great new Blitz by Tacom brand Yachtiger kit. So as you know from the first two episodes, we spent uh, most of our time on the suspension uh, and the tracks. Here's the hull uh, with the suspension and road wheels all completely done now. Uh, and there be tracks. Uh, I finished up the uh, Lincoln length tracks for the most part here. Uh, they give you these jigs, as I mentioned before, uh, in order to make uh, building the tracks quite a bit easier. The big gaps at the bottom will be filled in with a single piece uh, of track that also is provided. And uh, we'll be uh, going over this today and showing how we get all of these uh, track parts attached to the tank for good uh, this time. Now, uh, one thing I want to say now about the strategy of how we're going to be building this tank is that I'm not going to get too OCD here. Uh, I want to get a nice looking tank done in a relatively short period of time. So I'm not going to worry too much about making it have an absolutely perfect, super detailed paint scheme. And to make things a lot easier, rather than paint a bunch of parts as sub-assemblies and then attach them to the tank, we're going to complete the entire tank first, everything, and then start painting it. So a lot of folks, depending on uh, how they want to build their, their tanks, uh, they may at this point decide to go ahead and paint the tracks separately and then attach them uh, onto the hull. And that does make a lot of sense uh, from an assembly standpoint and an ease of painting standpoint. But if you take a look at what a Yacht Tiger looks like, you can see that there's going to be, you know, huge fenders covering almost all of the top of the, uh, the tracks uh, here on the top of the tank. So even if we can't you know, get our brush or a spray gun up underneath this fender and stuff, unless you're, uh, you know, being having your, your model examined by someone who's really, really got a super uh, picky eye for detail, it's not really going to matter if the stuff in here is, is not finished to an absolute top-notch level, because unless you go looking for it, you're not going to see it. So we're going to go ahead and put everything together on this kit, and then do the painting. Uh, and that's a technique that I learned from one of the, uh, the masters in Japan's hobby industry, and we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to the painting step. But before we can start doing the painting on this kit, we've got to finish the assembly. So let's dive in and get these tracks on this tank. Okay, before we can put these tracks onto the hull part, of course, we have to get them off of the jig. So we're going to start by doing that. And we're just going to carefully uh, use this uh, the tip of the handle this knife here to uh, pry the wheels off of the jig and hopefully everything will just come together nicely I guess I'm gonna have to use the blade part here to fit this in here and pry up very gently here I think we got this end there we go and now the other end. There we are. And now we are done with our jigs. These were really a great idea uh, for Tacom to uh, include them in the tank. It made building these, uh, these track sections quite a bit easier. So uh, we now have this section of track and the two wheels and that's going to go on this side of the tank. So let's go ahead and do that assembly. Gonna do a quick test fit here uh, to make sure everything goes in the way it's supposed to and looks the way it's supposed to. These tracks are flexible, even though of course the uh, the parts are glued into position. Of course, you can see how there's a, a long ridge of these. Uh, little plates sticking up out of the tracks and those are what the road wheels hook into so you have to make sure that those are slipped into the grooves on the road wheels. Okay that sounds pretty good. 
I think we're getting there. I think we may have got it. Yeah. Ta-da. So there you go. Uh, that's what it's going to look like in position. Gosh, it almost doesn't need uh, almost doesn't need any cement, but of course we're going to go ahead and cement this into place anyway. So now we're going to take it back off. Now that we know it fits just fine, and put some glue on that peg. Okay. I think we got it. Make sure that those guys are in the right position there and firmly in place. And we'll let this sit for a while while we attach the other side. There we go. And we have tracks. Check it out. Looks pretty good to me. Now, of course, we need to take care of these big pieces connecting to the bottom, and we're just hoping that the distance is going to be just right, uh, or uh, it's going to be within the realm of uh, being adjustable. So let's uh, see how that process goes. So this one is going to be connecting here, and I think we need one additional flat piece there, and it's already in place there, so it can go go directly in here and that looks like it's going to be a really nice fit boom right like that looks just about perfect on this side so let's go ahead and put that in place shall we looks like we nailed it on the positioning on this side okay. well that worked out just about perfectly so i'm just going to hold this with my fingers for a few seconds in order to uh or maybe uh closer to a minute actually, uh, to let the glue set. And then once I'm convinced that that's in a good, good way, we'll move over to the other side. Ta-da! Okay, we now have tracks and a suspension on my Yacht Tiger. I think it looks quite good. Now, I would say that I've put in about an hour each on the tracks for each side and then maybe a little bit under an hour for the suspension on each side. So we've probably got about three and a half to four hours of work on this little guy so far. But fortunately, we are now through all of the real tedious, repetitive stuff. And now we get into the fun. Now, the fun is all the little bits of on-vehicle equipment, the gun, the exhaust pipes, all the, all the goodies. And uh, in almost all those cases, only one, perhaps two pieces of the same thing. So we're not going to be mired in any uh, super you know, repetitive work going forward. Now, there is an interesting thing about this kit I want to point out. As you can see from the box top here, it is a two-in-one. Uh, it allows you to build either early or late production version of the Yacht Tiger. Now, frankly, the differences between the early and the late production version are pretty subtle. Uh, there's some differences in the base of the gun, the mantlet, I think it's called. Uh, a few differences in the, the doodads that are stuck around uh, the top of the hull, the handles, the fenders. Uh, it's all very fine detail. And they've created the, uh, an interesting way of doing this in the instructions. Normally, the callouts for the differences in the early and late version, when you have a convertible kit like this, uh, we'll just show the individual parts that need to go on a specific place. But instead, what Tacom has done here is divided the instruction steps into two complete separate tracks. So you see here we have 9-1 uh, and here we have 9-2. So if you're going to build the early version of the tank, you follow the dash ones. The late is the dash twos. Uh, and you can see that this, uh, this pattern continues on, on each of the pages here. Uh, with the exception, uh, I guess, of a couple of steps in the middle where what you do is, is common. But I looked through all of the differences in the instructions trying to figure out the differences between the dash ones and the dash twos, and they are very, very minor. Uh, but because I like tow cables and there's a couple more tow cables on the early version, I'm going to build the early version. Uh, so going forward now, everything I'm going to do will be on the dash ones. So we'll get started with those dash ones and all of the fun little bits uh, that we have yet to put on this tank. Let's see what we got here. Fenders and, and tow cables coming up. Uh, don't need the tracks anymore. Uh, here's another uh, runner full of uh, 
Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, we've got a bunch of different uh, parts here. All of this uh, hatches and machine guns and uh, you know the barrel locks. All that stuff is what we have to do next uh, to decorate the top of the hull. So everything going forward is pretty much just going to be uh, cutting out parts uh, and gluing them onto the hull. So it's pretty straightforward work, and I'm going to get started in that in our next episode. So stay tuned for that.